Listen in and join the fun. Learning as we go, new words and stories. Adventures begun. Let's open up the pages. Don't have far to look. It's all in a book. Rupees. Reading room. Rupees. Why, hello, my little readers. Welcome to Ruthie's Reading Room. I'm Ruthie, and this is my buddy, Ja. He's my favorite stuffy, and he's joining us for story time today. I just want to welcome you here, and I'm so happy you joined us again for another story during Black History Month. Is everybody excited to find out what this one's about? And it's a special day. What day is it? Valentine's Day! Yay! Oh boy, is it exciting? Does everybody have a special somebody? And your special somebody can be your mama or your daddy. We would love hugs and kisses from you. <laughs> That's great. So, oh, what else? Oh, you're right. Family Day. It's Family Day tomorrow. So do we all have an extra day off this week? Yes. Oh, okay. Some of you don't. But guess what? I want you to run and go get your stuffy or a blanket and bring a special friend to come and listen to story time with you. Run and come back now. All right. My little readers are coming back. Jaw is watching for you. <laughs> okay. Come on. Settle down. Gather around. Sit in your chair. Or if you like to stand, that's okay too. <laughs> and we're going to ask the question, which book is coming off the shelf next? Let's see. This book is called Idia of the Benin Kingdom, written by Ikiwa Iri and illustrated by Alina Shabelnik. Now, look at the front of this book. There's a beautiful little girl in there, isn't there? Yes. Do you think she might be Idia? Maybe. How do we find out? Read the book. Yes. But so let's make sure we're all ready to listen. Ja, I'm going to put you right here so that you can see. Let's put our listening ears on and put our hands in our lap. Perfect. Is everybody All right, my friends, you are. Awesome job, everybody. You must be ready to go. All right, let's read. In the African kingdom of Benin, a young girl named Idia was sleeping. She tossed and turned, her mind full of strange images. In her dream, a woman was fighting in a raging battle. Arrows zipped through the air at her from all directions but they missed. Her magic charms protected her. Quickly, the dream changed. The battle was over and the brave woman helped to heal those who were hurt by mixing herbs and potions and making the wounded fighters feel better with a single touch. Wow, sounds amazing. Imagine if you could heal someone with a single touch. Idia woke up with a start. What a strange dream, she thought as she dressed hurriedly. Do any of you sometimes have dreams that you remember? Are dreams that wake you up right out of your sleep? Yeah, oh, about a dragon? Okay, Gregory, what else? Of a storm, oh, that can be disturbing. Maybe a little frightening, yeah. That's okay, Tyler. Okay, anybody else? Oh, wow. Like of an animal coming into your house? What, a hippopotamus? Whoa, that would be one interesting dream. Very good. She had always been fascinated with tales of heroic battles and with magic, but such things did not happen here. The kingdom was peaceful, admired by visitors from all over the world, and its people were happy. Idia's thoughts returned to the dream 
Who was that woman? Women do not go to war. What could the dream mean? Hmm, lots of questions. Idia said good morning to her parents and then ran outside to meet her friend, Adesua. Let's hurry, Idia said. I want to get there early. Today was the Igwe festival, a day of celebration in the village of Ukihudu. There would be food, music, and dancing. Idia couldn't wait. If you were going to a festival like that, wouldn't you be excited? Me too. Up the wide, dusty trail, Idia and her friend went skipping and laughing all the way. Slow down, you'll wear yourself out before we get there, warned Adesua. Can you do this? Idia asked, rolling her arms and shoulders. She cleverly drummed her feet to the familiar rhythm of the Emra. That's a drum. Idia made it look like such fun that soon Adesua danced along the path too. Look at them go. <laughs> People buzzed with excitement in the center of the village. The Oba, the king, was there. Hands slapped drums. Fires were started to cook the feast. Idia adjusted her beads and greeted all her friends. The young villagers had learned a special dance for the occasion. Idia performed as though she had been born dancing. She held her head high as her arms and legs moved in perfect time to the rhythm. People clapped and her parents beamed with pride. Do any of you go to dance class? When you dance, dance class beautifully, was Idia's father told her afterward. Idia smiled, happy that her father had noticed how she danced. But the dream was still on Idia's mind. She couldn't get it out of her head. Maybe she should talk to her father about it. He was a village elder and a warrior. Eh? she said, tell me what is it like to be a warrior? Her father was a wise man. It is hard work, he said, and a big responsibility. But what is it like? Idia persisted. Why must we have war? What is the meaning of the warrior's secret ceremony? Are you afraid when you fight? Those are some good questions. So many questions, so said Idia's father. You will not need to be a warrior, Uvi. You should spend your time having fun dancing. However, the dream would not let her rest. Maybe I can't be a warrior, she said, but can I learn some of the things that a warrior learns? Her father sighed when he saw that his daughter would not give up. She persisted, didn't she? If you agree to keep practicing your dancing, he said, I will talk to you every night about being a warrior. Thank you, cried Idia, delighted. She made a good deal, didn't she? <laughs> every day, Idia danced. The more she danced, the better she became. The better she became, the more her father taught her about what it meant to be a warrior. He taught her about battle plans and how to deal with an enemy, and he even let her handle his weapons. Idia remembered all that she was taught, and she also remembered her dream. Well, they're keeping up their deal, aren't they? She's dancing and he's teaching. One day, Idia was helping her mother fetch water. Her mom stopped to gather plants. Iye, mother, please tell me, she said, about plants and healing, magic and medicine. Idia's mother knew a lot about these arts. You're much too young to worry about these things, said her mother. Please, I want to know. Idia kept asking. Her dream still lingered in her memory. Her mother finally gave in. You really want to learn about these things? Idia nodded, proud and sure of herself. Very well then, her mother agreed. Perform your chores properly each day and I will teach you about medicine and magic. Idia struck another deal, didn't she? Smart kid. From that day, whatever her mother asked her to do, Idia did. In return, her mother taught her about the gods and about medicine. Many years later, when Idia was older, she was invited to perform another dance with the village's best dancers for the young new Oba. The Oba enjoyed watching the dance. He also noticed Idia's energy, confidence, and rhythm. Later, the Oba sent messengers to Idia's home. He wanted to marry her. Idia was quiet for days afterwards. It would be unwise to refuse the Oba, but she didn't know if marrying him was the right thing to do.
To help them with their decision, Idya's parents summoned a native doctor. He chanted special prayers for protection and wisdom for Idya. He also made two deep marks in Idya's forehead, to which he applied special medicines. After the ceremony, Idya fell into a deep sleep. She began to dream. It was the same dream that she had as a child, but now that she was older, she could understand it clearly. She was the woman in the dream. She was a queen, and her young son was a king. There were many bad people who were his enemies, and they brought war to his kingdom. So the dream came back to her. When Idya woke, she knew she must marry the Oba. Thanks to her dad, she knew everything she needed to know about ruling a kingdom. She was also very good with medicine and magic, thanks to her mother. The kingdom of Benin would need her. Rising, Idya rushed to her parents and told them about her dreams. Osanubwa, God, has given you these dreams to show you your path, said her mother. You have always followed your heart and you must do so now, said her father. Your ehi, guardian angel, has determined your destiny. Your heart will lead you to where you are meant to be. When the day came for Idya to be married, her parents hugged her tightly. Go bravely, said her father, with joy and happiness, and promise me that as you become a wife, mother, and warrior, you will not forget to dance. I will never forget, answered Idya, and I will never forget you and mother. I will be a strong dancing warrior queen and make you both proud. And that is just what she did. She became a queen, a warrior, the first woman to fight for the kingdom, and the first Ioba, Queen Mother of Benin. The end. Wow, isn't that an awesome story? All of my girls out there, warrior queens, <laughs> that's amazing and perfect for Black History Month to learn about this queen long, long ago. And if you've ordered this book and were reading along with me, there's more information about Queen Idia and what is now Nigeria, formerly the Kingdom of Benin. So there's always so much more to learn. So I'm going to encourage you to check in the description below, click on the link to purchase your own copy, and add to your learning. When we're done here, feel free to jump on and search Idia, Queen of Benin, and learn more about her. And I encourage you to jump on and do more searches about Black history. So much information awaits you. All right, my friends, my little readers, thank you for joining me today. I'm so glad we were able to share this story. And remember, the best place to read is wherever you are with a book. Right, John? Okay. So if you enjoyed reading with us, please remember to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and hit that notification bell. We'll be reading together again soon. Happy reading. Happy Black History Month. Bye. Ruthie's Reddit.